That a boy. Yes, sir. When should the barrel enter the zone? Great at question. What point, what point? At what point should it enter into the zone? Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think um, the earlier the better. Now, w with with a little bit of a caveat, right? I think when teaching, um, because if I go super early, if I go super early, I'm going to drag the barrel. Exactly. Which I'm going to get. It's going to. It's going to. I'm not. I'm going to eliminate that speed. And if you think about it, speed plus mass or speed times mass equals farther distances. So you want to have the best of both worlds. Yes. So like early being like you have to teach the body no you have to teach you have to do things that convince the brain that what the body already knows how to do so and what i mean by that is like so a lot of times you don't have to you know if, if you can teach someone sequencing right stride first back leg let the back leg and the pelvis pull the barrel forward like a lot of times if, if that sequencing happens happens oops sorry um, it gets on, it gets on plane. Right. So I, but I think there's a lot of like cues that you can do, you know, whether that's using pipe, some people don't like that. But for me, the only reason I do any of those hands on things is so people can understand it and feel it. Right. Because like, I think a lot of times, you know, with certain people, you know, um, there's, a, there's, a, there, there's a group of hitting people that think it's, you know, to do it one way, but a lot of them that go with that, they have, they feel like they're dumping, right? Or they feel like they're always underneath the baseball, right? Or, um, <clears throat> you know, and so like, and then there's the opposite on the other end too. They always feel like they're too. And so really like, it's just those cues using the pipes, right? There's like, you know, there's a pipe, there's a drill where like you can put it underneath both armpits and like you just hold the pipe and you can. So you're, you're saying, you're saying PVC pipe? Yes, PVC pipe, right? And the only reason, again, only reason you use PVC pipe is because you can feel it and you can move it easily, right? There's so many, there's so many different things out there that you can that you can use for hitters that really when they go to swing, they're already doing that. But then a, a, a six foot PVC pipe lets them feel, whoa, wow. Okay, well, I, I felt a lot of bat speed. I felt a lot more bat speed there. I felt a lot more whatever there. So I think, I mean, there's that, that's why there's so many drills, right? You can, you can take a bat and put it underneath your arm, right? And then, you know, I, like, there's so many different things that you can do to, to help that. And so I think it's early, but I think it's like teaching the the kid, this is what we're trying to do. We're not trying to get behind and lose, right? Like, and there's, um, we're getting to do, a, we're getting ready to do a YouTube video on this, right? But there's a, um, we're doing like a then and now with Mookie and um, from when he came up or when he started first playing pro ball until now and like, one of the things that you can see is his like in the four, 2014 clip is his barrel starts breaking before he gets to the baseball right and so like <clears throat> showing clips showing clips to kids like hey like we don't want this barrel we don't want there to, it to start looking like a door yet right we want the body to take to pull the bat and we don't want that we don't want the bat to look like a door yet um, because if you, if that, if that barrel gets away from you, it's going to create that, that drag a little bit early. So you want that sweet, like the sweet part, which is the densest part of the wood or the metal, which is really hard for metal bats, especially those D Marinis. Like those things are, those things are so hot. You could literally just put it out there and it would, it would it's like a backyard baseball where you have like the mega, the mega bat and you just literally it bunt it and it, go, it, it, it goes away. Literally like out of the earth. <laughs> yes. But it, it's it, it's it's understanding that like I want to keep that dense part of the wood or that metal close to my body as long as I possibly can, and then being able to get it and break it out towards that towards that ball like that that's the whole. Have you ever heard the um the phrasing "drop the hammer"? That's literally what it, what we're saying is like drop that dense part of the wood and that bat on top of that ball as fast as you can. And I, and I think a really good way to like for people to understand it is the the cue stay on your line right so it comes from a lot of different people but like um i i've i've just found that that's very successful for people to understand it's like you know like if, if you're just like standing in the box right that that the white line the inside white line just like thinking okay i want my bat to work on that line oh, that's a good point until i can't touch the baseball right that's a really good point that like I've just found so much success by people finding natural plane by doing the sequencing correctly that you don't even always have to teach to teach the stuff, right? Like 
I think sometimes people do eye wash stuff, right? With some of that, some of that, some of the drills and stuff. But I'm just, I add those drills in when somebody's, you know, the top hands or the bottom hands having trouble finding it or the top hands. That, so like, mm -hmm. but like even just, even just getting, and I did this, I did this yesterday with a kid, like even just like dividing up into three parts, right? Like I don't care if they're a pro guy or they're six. Stride is one, back leg is two, hands are three, right? And just having them do like one, two, pause, and then hold the three. Right. And then like, just like, then you tell them to release the three and man, I, you'll be surprised because like the pelvis and the hips are pulling the bat and like, yeah. they're going to pull the bat to where the ball is because that's where the eyes are. And so like, I think it's, um, you can get very technical about it. And I think, you know, I, I, I can do both. Right. And I think that the drills help the cues help the restraints help. But I think what it comes down to is if you get the proper sequencing, you can hand, you can get a lot of the plain part and, not perfectly, but naturally, and naturally is where you, where you really want it to happen, because um, then you can make tweaks really easy, as opposed to well, I gotta I gotta completely sequentially and cemently teach this, and so they're they're not gonna be they're not they're gonna have drag most of the time, um, in my mm -hmm. opinion. At what point should the barrel exit the zone? So I think a lot of people have seen like three four swings, right? Um, if you're if you're on any kind of social media, so three a three four swing would just be um you know making contact and then not so if you're dividing it up into force right the swing enter get to the ball you know get through the ball and then fourth will be re returned so just get into that third quadrant uh, mookie betts is a really good person to watch with that he does it a lot like in his so hold on so let's so so let's explain that so yeah you, you're 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 loading and striding the barrel you're starting to swing so your hands are having a forward progression your barrel enters the zone that's that's one then barrel gets to contact. That's two. Third is you're getting th is working through, and then the fourth one is the finish where you're fully rotated. So now what Cameron's talking about is the third quadrant, which is the follow the the through. You're getting through the baseball. So Mookie Betts does the the three fourths drill. So go ahead and explain that. Yeah. So he just when he when he's on deck, uh, or even when he's hitting baseballs, right? So the he, he will do the three, a three, four swings. A lot, a lot of different people do them, um, as well, but it's really just, if you just imagine, um, it's just, you get to contact, you work through contact. And then when you, you reach until you literally can't touch the baseball anymore. And that's, that's the exiting of the, the third part, the third quadrant. And that's when the fourth quadrant comes in. Right. So, um, <clears throat> I think that the longer that the barrel can stay on, so the barrel is where all the stuff, all the power and the torque is being released, right? That's the focus mm -hmm. point of where the exit of the, the physics is going, right? So we want to stay, we want that barrel working behind that, behind that ball and with that ball as long as possible. Because if we make contact, we make good contact, and then we peel off, it's almost like, all the hard work we did just was for not because we're going to make good loud contact, but it's going to stop. Right. And, and one of the mm -hmm. things that like I tell my guys is that the, the bat should follow the ball. Right. And what I mean by that is if you let go of the bat, they should be like, if the ball was here, right. If the ball was wherever the ball was going and then <clears throat> the bat, you let go of the bat and it was like doing the helicopter, they should be on the same angle. Right. Because if you're wasting anything, like if you're a righty and you're wasting stuff behind you to the third base dugout, all you're doing is taking away power. And the it doesn't always show up from the the power that you're missing if you if you don't stay with the baseball. It doesn't always show up from the in, from the plate to the infield. It shows up whether it gets past the outfielder or the outfielder get, catches at the track or or anything like that, right? So from so from the outfield grouse out, that's where that happens. And so like, I can remember there was a kid I worked with a couple years ago and he just was having a lot of balls, strong kid, a lot of juice, like stupid juice for a little kid. And he was just having a lot of that happen because he was really good too. And he kind of went through, but he never, he never made it all the way to the, all the way to the third quadrant. And he started mm -hmm. doing that and he ended up leading his collegiate team in home runs. And like, I mean, he's every bit of, five, 10, 170 pounds and not uh, drop your shoulder, hit the ball. Like he just, I mean, I think nine of eight of his home runs or something like that were to straightaway right field. 
right? So not a not a big dude that's trying to untie his shoes when he swings. And so that third quadrant is is really the goal and just more just more because we don't want to waste it. I don't want to get here and then peel off, right? I, mm-hmm. I want to get here and I, I want to get to the ball, which is good, but I want to finish through. I would argue that the finish is almost it's almost more important than getting to it because getting to it is like the studying for the test, right? Good, important, you can do all that stuff. But if you forget a pin, it doesn't matter, right? Like yeah. it, 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 <laughs> doesn't matter. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And so you've got to be able to get you've got to be able to let all of that stuff finish because a lot of people will hit the ball on their turn. And so what I mean by that is they'll make contact with as they're rotating and their body's working around their spine, they'll make contact as they're still rotating around their spine. And they rotate off of it. They rotate off of it. And a lot and a lot of coaches think it's you're opening up your front shoulder. It's it's you're literally rotating too early. A hundred percent. Right. And so like, so when you, when you're making contact with the ball and you're still like, you know, finishing that your, uh, your elbows are going to be bent. So think about all that, that you, all that stuff that you still have to push and you still have to finish. If we spin off or <clears throat> we don't work into that third quadrant, you're wasting all that. You're wasting mm-hmm. all that. So you might as well just like not extend your arms and not do anything. Right. And just kind of baby arm it. Cause that's, that's essentially what you're doing. And so I think that, just like being aware of that third quadrant as a visual, um, you know, what we used to set up a, um, just like a, essentially like one of those covers for the infield when you're hitting fungo. So it doesn't, doesn't mess up the infield. And we used to, we did a color system and it's like, Hey, we just like get to this third quadrant, try and get to this third quadrant. We would, and we would, you know, test our guys. We put it way out in front, but like, it's like, Hey, like I'd rather you work out that way. And then just, you know, let the bat go back to cinder. So I think that's, a, I think that's a really good way. Just like visuals help people. Um, it's that, it's that same thing, right? It can be likened to like hit the ball, still be in contact with the ball, three balls after the tee, right? Some, some people may be familiar with that terminology, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's the whole thing. That's what the third quadrant is, is being, I would even say maybe five balls, right? Trying to be five balls, off the you know from the plate still connected to the ball or still moving that way and i think so that third quadrant so if you think about that i mean you're engulfing if you're in the zone from first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant like you're you're matching incredibly so right and that could be different right it could be a chris davis is in early or it could be a miggy that's in that's in a little bit later right but it's just he's still hitting all three quadrants and working through that's how he can hit the ball out to right field it's really it's really tough to teach that to younger guys and um one drill that we used to use a lot when i was playing was um replaced contact so basically you're closing yourself off you're hitting through the baseball but then if you're trying to get back to contact you can't rotate over if you rotate too much you're not going to be able to get back to the to the right spot um another drill we used to do was the helicopter drill where we would hit through and we'd have the helicopter it just like fred mcgriff the crime dog Catch new episodes of the Tiger Interview Series on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and you can watch it on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to get notified of future episodes by setting notifications to all. And check out our website, rawlingstigers.com, for club, baseball, and softball information.